Okay, I am here with Bob Donnell, and uh, he's got some amazing journeys that he's going to share with us. He and I just recently became friends, and, and it almost seems like we have a lot of parallels, uh, you know, to our lives. And uh, I kind of clicked with this guy really well, you know, in a short amount of time. And uh, I'm really happy to have you here today, Don, uh, Bob. So, uh, Mr. Bob Donnell. You know, I asked this typical question because it kind of sets a tone. And I think it'll help. But what was one of the first wants that you had uh, growing up? You know, up? I grew up without a dad. And I think uh, some of the things that uh, that probably early on, I would see my friends have their dads go to the baseball games, go do things. And I remember thinking, that would be kind of cool um, to have that. And I think so probably early on was I wanted a dad. And so um, not sure that... Uh, uh, the the stepdad that I got was uh, was very present. He was never there, um, and so I grew up thinking I didn't have a dad. So, right, right, <laughs> it, that sounds familiar. But uh, so let let's get involved in your journey. You know what your childhood was like leading up to you know your story. Yeah, you know I was raised by a single mom. Um, like I said, never really knew my dad. So. Um, you know, growing up with a single mom, you know, you get all the, the stuff that typically you don't have a lot of money. You typically are moving around. I went to six different high schools. I went to um, over 20 different elementary and junior highs, moved around a lot. And people said, oh, were you in the military? It was no, my mom just couldn't afford to keep us in one place for very long. And so it was always one of those things where, um, you know, it, <sighs> Everyone said, wasn't that tough moving around a lot? And I said, I didn't know any different. Um, and one of the things, the, the things that I got out of moving around a lot was I got to reinvent myself a lot. But I also got to move into a situation and, real, and figure out really quickly who was my ally and who was my foe. And so some of the benefits of that were those things. But, um, and then, you know, growing up and, and uh, at 15, my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer and was given six months to live. And, um, my, my, uh, I, you know, I was like, okay, you know, in denial, well, that'll never happen. She's going to live forever type of thing. And I remember a gentleman walking up to me one day when I was 15, 15 and a half. And he says, Hey Bob, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he was a friend of my mom's and, and I went, you know, I don't really know, but why are you asking me? I'm 15 years old. And he says, well, because you can learn a product or service or an industry or you can learn um, something that drives any product, any service, or any industry. And I said, well, what's that? And he said, human behavior. If you learn and understand human behavior, you can help any industry. I said, sign me up, kind of facetiously, kind of jokingly. And he said, great, go become a peer counselor at your school. And uh, so I okay, sure. So I went and became a peer counselor. And fast forward, uh, at age 19, I founded a nonprofit organization working with suicide prevention, crisis management, and uh, crisis intervention, and that kind of set the trajectory for the rest of my life. But that one question at age 15, what do you want to be when you grow up, don't know, was was uh, life-changing. So after your high school, what was the, what would you say was the, the first bit of success that you started to experience after that? Well, I think that founding that nonprofit was the first success. Um, you know, having a Having a board of directors, um, I remember I was just working with kids independently and working, you know, things and, uh, at 18, 17, 18, 19. And then a gentleman called me who uh, was an attorney and I was working with his stepson. And he called me up one day and says, Bob, I need you to come by the office. And I don't know about you, but at 19, I'm thinking, why am I getting called to an attorney's office? And normally I would just go to his house and meet with him and his family. Why am I? I'm like, oh, what did I say? What did I do? You know, the, <laughs> the monkey wheel starts playing. And uh, I sit and go to his office and he goes, you know, Bob, he goes, you're doing a great job with our son. And I think you need to just play a bigger game. And I'm like, what does that look like? And he said, well, I think you need to start a nonprofit 501c3. I think you need to start putting together a board of directors, a board of reference. I think you need to start going out and speaking and raising money. And I'm like, whoa, 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 I'm, I'm 19. Serious? And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, look, board of directors, I'm 19. Who's going to ever stamp their approval on me? And he goes, well, if you have an attorney, 
people will tend to be feel safe. I'll be the attorney. And um, so that's where I re- learned borrowed credibility. That was a huge thing where I learned that immediately. Uh, and he says, when you call people, he says, I want you to put together a list of people that you think are professionals, maybe a psychologist, psychiatrist, people that are friends of the family, friends of your, you know, your friends, your dad's friends or, what, or your friend's dad's. It's okay. So put together a list of seven people. I called all seven with a script that he gave me. He gave me a very specific script and said, this is what you say. And uh, six of the seven said yes immediately. And the seventh says, I'm out of town. I'll call you next week when I get back into town. Called me the next week and said yes. So I had a psychologist, psychiatrist, marriage family therapist, sergeant narcotics for LA County PD, an attorney, uh, a parent, and a, vi- and a vice principal of a public school. Um, pretty good. 